Oh. A wild class room of ego geeks exploring biodiversity. The world is a beautiful mystery. Life, learning, and discovery. We're just kidding. You don't need to be Rambo to see the rainforests. But you will want to be prepared. Hmm, packing for an animal-filled jungle trip. First thing first, camera. I'm sure animals will be everywhere I look. iPod, check. Rechargeable snake bike kit. Oh yeah, umbrella, got it covered. Essential high-performance footwear in case of a uh, jaguar attack or toothbrush. Nah, those are for wussies. Bug repellent, backup, spotlight, critter spotter. Portable drill, fully charged, check. Ninja yardstick, face to face, three feet of space. Oh, hydration key. You're not living in one of those nature documentaries. Yeah, where the animals jump out at you everywhere. The animals really are everywhere. You just gotta be a little patient and know what to look for. So let's talk about the rainforest. Well, what is a rainforest? That's a really good question. Rainforests are actually defined by the amount of rain that actually falls in them. So by definition, rainforests receive at least two meters of rainfall. That's like six feet of water. With that definition, that would mean that rainforests cover about 12% of the globe. But unfortunately today, rainforests only cover about 5%. Here in Panama, we're in a tropical moist forest and it's very seasonal. There's four months a year where there's very little rain. But like all rainforests, diversity is huge, even if you don't see it right away. A great example of diversity is in the diversity of bats. Now, there's nearly a hundred different species of bats that live in Panama. Right here behind this map is actually a family of bats, and they're not living out necessarily in the wild, but in the person's home. Get a close-up of all this bat poop. Oh, there's like... Have to start a garden, that's for sure. Woo. Histoplasmosis? Good. <laughs> the rainforest is an interesting habitat, though, because within it, what seems like a tangle of greenery, everything is fighting for the light. And as a result, there arises certain distinct layers. To get a good look at the rainforest layers, though, we should get above the trees and look at it from the very top and work our way down. What a better place to do that than from the largest tree in the forest. So that's why we're here. We're in the canopy of a tropical rainforest, and we're here with Bryson, who works in the canopy studying sloths. I'm a canopy researcher in Panama, and I study two and three-toed sloths. I radio track them all around the canopy. Sloths love to hang out in the tops of these emergent trees. They'll spend days in one tree eating fruits and leaves. The only thing that really brings them down is to to a number two. A little bit lower down is the canopy layer. Now it's in this layer that most of the life exists, yet we know so little about it. Take this Luea tree for instance. Scientists have discovered 163 species of beetle, among other things, just living in this one tree species. I'm up here in the understory layer, the layer right below the canopy layer. Here a huge array of animals live their entire lives just cruising from branch to branch. An animal like that is the tamandua, who spends all of its time looking for arboreal termites and ants to get its snack on. Another animal that's up here that's so well suited for this environment is the spider monkey. Look at its long arms and that prehensile tail. Oh, Susie, check it out, right there in the shrub layer. 
There's a snake. Vine snakes are specially adapted to eat frogs and lizards that live on large leaf plants in the shrub layer. Now light is really limiting down here, and so the plants that live down here can tolerate very low levels of sunlight. Oh no! Ah. Ow. And falling down here on the floor. Floor is floor. There's only about 1% of the light that actually falls onto this ground, but it's a perfect place for animals that like to live amongst this dead leaf matter like agoutis. They'll scurry around all through here and look for seeds, and they're really important for seed dispersal in the forest. Oh, and another critter down here living on the forest floor is this little cat-eyed snake. Perfectly well adapted for living along these, this layer of dead leaves searching for prey. There's a whole variety of other kinds of animals that specifically just live in this area. Ooh. Ah, and ants too. I can hear, ow. These leaf cutter ants actually travel through all the layers of the forest. They begin by taking their leaves from the very tops of the trees. They bring those pieces all the way back down into a subterranean processing plant underground. Let's follow these guys down into their underground layer. Here is a perfect environment for the ants to grow the specific fungus that feeds off these pieces of leaves. The ants, in turn, eat this delicious fungus. Okay, besides the rainforest having a unique structure, there are other things that make it a cool biome, like the recycling of nutrients, up here from the trees, down to the soil. The soil in the vast majority of rainforests is extremely poor. Only forests in rich volcanic zones have nutrients deeper than this first layer. When trees grow here, they send lots of roots out into this top layer of the soil. Look at this little seedling. Its roots are taking full advantage of this thin layer of decomposing leaves. It's also taking full advantage of all of this sunlight caused by this fallen tree. So don't you remember? Now light is really limiting down here, and so the plants that live down here can tolerate very low levels of sunlight. So when a big tree falls down like this in the forest, it creates a massive hole in the canopy layer. Then light can reach the forest floor, allowing seedlings to get a head start and possibly one day grow into a huge tree and close the hole in the canopy. This is rainforest succession and nutrient recycling at its best. With the human population growing, they put more and more pressure on the rainforest and everything that lives in them, including indigenous people. Cultures are changing rapidly. Many rainforest cultures traditionally hunt for food and find everything that they need from the rainforest. These people know so much about the forest. We still have so much to learn and we have just begun to unlock the secrets that the rainforest hold. But we're quickly losing our ability to find out about these things as rainforests and cultures throughout the world are changing. So what can we do? What can you do? There's no one way to save the rainforest. It's a complicated issue, but here's a few things we'd suggest. You know, we're all shaped by our experiences, right? Travel to the rainforest. Find out as much as you can about the plants, the animals, and the local culture. I might suggest knowing where the food you eat comes from. You might not realize it, but a lot of the food we're using every day comes from the rainforests. For more information, go to thewildclassroom.com slash biomes. And until next time, we encourage you to never stop exploring.